in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. Amen. Let us bless each other, be at peace. You're the missionaries to save the world. With the eternal answer, let's inherit the desolate heritages. We were once living without a goal, and we lived on without hope. By the cross, Christ has come to us. I bless you in the name of the Lord that this time be the time where you really receive all of the blessing through the name of the name of Christ on the cross. Today's title is Making Peace by the Blood of His Cross. We are now coming towards the lunar, lunar New Year, and I bless you in the name of the Lord. May you, wherever you go, may the peace of the cross be with you. This one daughter-in-law had this one earnest prayer topic regarding her husband's household. And that was for that place to be gospelized. Because that place was a place of uh, idol worship and it was the household of the firstborn son. So she continued to pray for that place to be gospelized. And her mother-in-law received the gospel. And now she was about to be baptized. So there, uh, uh, before she was getting, getting baptized, she was going to have a baptismal answer. And the pastor is going to ask you, mother-in-law, who is Jesus Christ? Say that it is my Lord. So the mother-in-law couldn't understand. So if the pastor ask you, asked you who is Jesus Christ, then don't say anything else. Just say he's my Lord. Now she, the mother-in-law sat in front of the pastor the pastor asked, Who is Jesus Christ? And she said, It is my daughter-in-law's Lord. So who is Jesus Christ to you? Is it the Jesus Christ inside of the Bible? Or is it the Jesus Christ that is always spoken in the pulpit? I bet you in the name of the Lord, don't ask this question to anyone else, but ask this to yourself. Who is Jesus Christ? And may you come to that answer. Just as the choir gave praise today, if Christ on the cross comes to me, then we do not we no longer live a wandering life but have a goal. And we will live a life with hope. I bless you in the name of the Lord. If you, anyone here who are seated here who do not know Jesus Christ, may you come to the answer. It's not the Jesus Christ that is spoken in the Hana Church pulpit. It's not the pulp. It's not the Jesus Christ that was in the Bible. 
this gospel must become my gospel just as Paul confessed. So this is what we must take a look at in the first point today. Who is Christ to me? This, these questions must come to you. So first it is the Jesus that Peter and the disciples thought. So the disciples never had success. And these people were always in the midst of failure. So they were just living a normal day life. So Peter and the disciples thought that Jesus will give them some kind of place to sit. But if you see in Matthew 16, 23, uh, 21, so after the disciples and Peter confessed that Jesus is Christ, and Jesus spoke of what will happen to him, and he will suffer on the cross, and he will be crucified and killed, and in the third day he will uh, rise from the dead. So, and Peter, he gained courage and spoke out and saying, Who will kill you, Lord? But that was the hidden motives of Peter. So if, Peter, if Jesus dies, then nothing will happen. That is why Peter will... He said he will stake his life and save Jesus. So it might have seemed loyal at that time. But at that time, Jesus told Peter, if you see in verse 23, he says, But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me. It wasn't because Peter was Satan. Peter had to listen to the gospel as well. And he must know the cross. But Satan is the one who tries to take that away. That is why Jesus spoke to Peter. And he says, For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but the things of men. So what Peter had concerns of was concerning men. So how will they be set free from the colonization of Rome? So the, he only thought about the things of man. But the God's method was the cross. It says, for you are not setting your minds on the things of God, but on the things of men, it says. So, all of the people during, back in that time, they had the thought, how would they be set free from this colonization by Rome? But what was the work of God? It was the work of God where through the cross, they will have all problems solved. So with the efforts and the diligence of men, they cannot get their original sin solved. So there is only one way that God gave. So He has set us free from death to life. And He has changed us from the children of Satan to the children of God. And He has changed the background of hell to uh, background and the people of heaven. But if you think, if, because the disciples only thought about the things of men, they could not acknowledge this. How can Jesus uh, be crucified on the cross? So their calculations and their thoughts and their concerns were all things of men. But how are the Oh, 
on how Jesus was going to be crucified on the cross. If the disciples wanted to live, they ha must ha not have any relations with Jesus. So Peter, in front of the suffering of Jesus, he rejected Jesus. He swore to God and and say he had no relations with Jesus. And he swore and he cursed. If you see in verse 74 of 26, then he began to call down curses and he swore to them, I don't know the man immediately, a rooster crowed. So, because he had to live, that is why he cursed and swore in front of Jesus. And Jesus was crucified on the cross and he rose in the thir third day. And Jesus came to the disciples who were hiding inside of the house. And he says in John 20, 19-22, so the Lord that they were following has died, and they had no hope, and they were seized by fear. That is why the disciples gathered together. But in that field, the resurrected Lord came to them, and what did he say? What is the first thing he said? He says, Peace be with you. To the disciples who were who are inside of fear, Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. And in Acts 1, 3, for 40 days, he spoke about the kingdom of God. And that is when the spiritual state of the disciples changed, and their interests all changed as well. And all of their thoughts also changed. They were able to find the Jesus Christ who has become life to them. And in Acts 1.14, 120 disciples were discouraged gathered together. And they joined together constantly in prayer. And there, the works of the Holy Spirit arose that no one could block. And they were able to know the mystery of the gospel. And in Acts 2, you can see the disciples going out and preaching the gospel. It says, therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And in Acts 3, Peter stood in front of the person, a man that was lame from birth. All the Jewish people know, knew him because he always sat in front of the temple gate called Beautiful and begged. And if you see, the Jewish people, they always had a heart. Uh, to help others, that is why they gave coins to that person. Because their, uh, person, uh, their lives were doing good deeds. But Peter, knowing the gospel, saw the crippled man differently and spoke to him. Silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. It was not the Christ that he knew with his knowledge, but he said, What I have, I give to you. The problem of destiny and faith that cannot be solved through money, Peter gave that answer. So with science or medical fields cannot give us the answer. 
그리스도의 빛이 들어오니까 사망과 저주와 운명이 해결되어지는 것입니다. Only when we met, when we meet with Christ, the forces of darkness flee, and when the light of Christ comes came inside of us, we were set free from fate, curses, and death. And when Peter raised up this crippled man, what did he do? He ran inside of the temple and rejoiced. And praise God. So spiritual change arose, and because of this, the early church was persecuted again, and they were framed. They crucified Jesus on the cross, but people who believe in Jesus uh, gradually increased. And so, in Acts four, you can see the Jewish people raised Peter and John in the religious court. And tells them, "Do not speak of Jesus." This is what they said: "Never speak in the name of Christ." And that's when Peter proclaims of the uniqueness of God, of Jesus. It's Acts four twelve. We cannot receive salvation with other in other name. God has. It says, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. So this Peter who rejected Jesus, but now he holds on to the gospel and says, salvation is found in no one else. 그렇습니다. 예전 같으면은 제자들 마음 속에 예수는 위대한 스승이었습니다. In the hearts of the disciples, Jesus was once a great teacher, because when they followed after Jesus, they Jesus showed miracles. So if Jesus becomes king, then they thought that they will have a seat, a place that will be given to them. So that's what their interests were in. Before they met the resurrected Christ, they were not the gospel. They lived inside of religion. Jesus was not the Christ to them. They heard the gospel, but gospel was not inside of them. Though they were with Jesus, but they did not know that He was the Creator God. That was the spiritual state of the disciples. But how about us? But thankfully, the disciples saw the resurrection, and they had the assurance that Jesus is Christ. They experienced the power of the gospel, and they were able to find the value of the gospel. They were able to saw see the absolute value of the gospel. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May this. Day be the day, be that day. And I really hope that may you find the true value that Jesus is Christ. And secondly, it is the incident that Christ has given us through the incident of cross. We listen to the, about we listen about the Christ. So ask our children, where is Jesus? And they will all say that He is inside my heart. Even though they cannot speak, they will just tap their heart. I saw on YouTube this children, this child that was not. That was young in age. The child was about five or six years old, but this child did the way of salvation. But I think to myself, can that child really believe that Jesus is Christ?
they just memorize that and they do that way of salvation. But do they truly have that Jesus is Christ to them? Can this child really understand what the image of God is? When we do the way of salvation, we say that oh, we we're created in the image of God, but we are separated from Satan. Do we? Tr does that child truly know who Satan is? If we truly know the gospel, we must view everything with the eyes of the gospel. If we truly know the gospel, we are able to view all the people with the eyes of the gospel. And we are able to see all of our past and all of our scars through the gospel. And having a recreation of that is true gospel. So I told you in the early morning prayer today, because I truly know Christ, I want to know Christ more. So I was able to see that, oh, I cannot rationally speak that I came to the realization of the gospel. We easily speak and say that, oh, we re uh, realize the gospel. When you say that you realize the gospel, how do you feel? The more we know the gospel, we are able to see myself, other people, and all of my past through the gospel. And we are having everything reinterpreted through the gospel is knowing the gospel. See, Joseph, he was sold off as slave by his brothers. And for 13 years, he was enslaved. He could not break free even though he struggled. If it was just a normal person, they would just go mentally crazy. But Joseph, holding on to the gospel, viewed everything inside of the eyes of the gospel. So he reinterpreted everything with the gospel. So he viewed everything with in the perspective of the gospel and evangelism. And that is why he spoke to his brothers. I did not come here because you guys sold me off. God wanted to save your lives. That's why God has sent me ahead of you. Really, find the answer. Even though we have the same problems, how we view it is different. You're able to come to uh, change where you view everything, not by religion, but inside of the eyes of the gospel. Paul first thought the cross was a the cross was a curse. But the resurrected Christ came to Jesus, or came to Paul. If you see in 1 Corinthians 1.18, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. In Galatians 6.14, he says, He will not boast about anything other than the cross. Let us all read together. May I never boast except in the Christ cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Paul first thought that 
cross was a symbolization of curse, but he was able to see that this was the grace that God was giving him. So separated from God, we had no choice but to die, but setting us free from this destiny and fate and curses was the cross. He was able to come to that realization, and he had his he knew that Christ being crucified on the cross was the way to save his original problem. That is why he confessed that he will not boast about anything except the cross. The more we realize the gospel, we have no choice but to give thanksgiving. And in today's passage, it says, if you see in verse 22, it says, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death. So what is this death? It was speaking about uh, the answer and the solution to the Genesis 3 problem. We had no choice but to die, but Christ died for us instead. So if you see in 2 Corinthians, he says, we are a new creation. What does this mean? So we have, are now the children of God that was, uh, who has been set free from death to life. So really, enjoy this. The gospel that is given to us is perfect. That's why in John 19.30, he says, it is finished. So, on the cross, the uh, price for de uh, sin is death, but on the cross he has finished everything, and there was no way for us to meet God. But God, through Christ, has opened that door. And that is what it means by, it is finished. And Hebrews 9.28 it says, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many. And he will appear a second time not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. He has uh, become the solution to all of our problems, all of our original sins, and give us salvation and given us the way to meet God. And this gospel is everything. Inside of the gospel, inside of Christ, we have no right to condemn others. Because Christ has finished everything on the cross. So you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Do you have problems, conflicts with others? Or are you faced with hardship because of your past? Or am I bound by something? Be free. You'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. In Romans 8.2, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May you be truly free from everything. In Romans 5, 8, it says, or 5, 6, it says, when we were still powerless, it was a time when we were broken down, when we had no way to meet God. It is the time when we cannot be set free from Satan. But Christ died for the ungodly. In Romans 5.8 it says, While we were still sinners, and 
verse 6 it says while we were still weak and in verse 8 it says while we were still sinners so it was a time when we still had the fundamental problem but God showed demonstrated his own love for us Christ died for us and that's the way how God demonstrated his own love for us so stand before God not because of environments or in front of people if you are truly able to stand before God then all of your problems will be solved and while we were God's enemy so Adam was separated from God and because of Satan, he stumbled down. So it means the spiritual death, but Christ died for us and solved our original sins while we were still weak. Because you have no strength and you have no power, are you still lying down? And when we were yet sinners, and when we were yet God's enemies, God gave us Christ, and Christ died for us. And this Christ is the same today and forever. It's not the Jesus that is spoken in the pulpit or inside of the Bible. What kind of Jesus are we believing in? He has come to us while we were powerless and he has come to us while we were yet sinners and he has come to us when we were still God's enemies and Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever so every day think about this Christ just as the choir gave praise today so that the power of Christ may fully come out. Always enjoy Christ every day. So when you open your eyes in the morning, really have this time of meditation so that you can receive the absolute strength. And before you go to sleep, Go inside of the world and find all of the answers there. And during the day, view everything inside of the gospel. Then wherever you go, regardless of your, of your strength, the power of the triune God and the blessing of the throne will come upon you. Do not be deceived by the conflicts with others. The more we enjoy this gospel, we are able to win over the uh, we win over our unbeliefs, and we are able to win over the conflicts with others. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May this uh, gospel be everything perfect to you. I'll come to the end of my words. So you're able to see what the grace of God that was given to us by the crucifixion of Christ. It says by making peace by the blood of the cross. As, and you who once were alienated or hostile in mind. Is this, and you who once were alienated and hostile in mind doing evil deeds and he has called us to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before, before him 
I bless you in the name of the Lord. May this uh, grace be fully abundant inside of your lives, enjoying Christ and the gospel every day. Thank 